Hey everyone. We are going live here. Just getting started. All right. Okay, let's do this. Okay, just getting set up, folks. Hey, everyone. Just waiting for everyone to get here to edit some photos today. I could ask you what your day's like, but it's probably just like yesterday. Hi, Crystal. How you doing? Hopefully everyone's having a productive day. Let me get my mouse back on this side here. Try and use an additional screen. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dorothy. Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be another tutorial where we basically spend some time in Snapseed, which is basically a very simple but free app that you can edit your photos on your phone in. So um, I think this might be our, this could be our fourth, um, this could be our fourth session. Um, so we have been uh, repeating ourselves for sure, but that's kind of the plan. The plan is to um, the plan is to kind of let it set in. Um, there's nothing worse than doing it once and then not getting to do it again. So our plan is to kind of review things and do different pictures because the thing with pictures, every picture is different, and I think um, just doing a landscape is completely different than doing pictures of food, animals, people, and so on. So, uh, Crystal says, uh, older boys help out around the house today cleaning. Oh, geez, good stuff. Uh, we're, we're procrastinating on the cleaning. Um, I did, I did, uh, cook today. I made 50 small tortillas for the freezer. So I was busy and uh, I was looking forward to this. I still have to walk the dogs. You can hear them probably in the background. They're a little anxious. So, uh, after this, I'll take them. So, uh. I'm going to um, just give it five minutes we'll, if anyone else wants to join, and then I'll um, get a picture going here. I think uh, I've, I've got some... It was snowing today, so I thought the first thing I want to do is pull up a picture that I edited once before, and I want to... Um, yeah, good for the freezer, stocking them up. I want to edit something that's kind of cool and magic... Uh, I guess kind of magical kind of looking. So uh, kind of uh, Chris, it's kind of Christmassy. But anyways, we're going to go. So I'm going to open it up. Um, I'm going to go down to my, so I've got some albums. So I'm going to go into this album and I'm going to pull this picture up. This is the photo I want to edit today. Now, someone took this and I can't remember who took it. I, I think it's in Port Hope. Or Port Perry. It's Port Perry. I know it's Port Perry. Someone took this photo, and I can't remember. Maybe it was uh, Lynn McDonald, and, and she sent it to me. And then what I did was I played around with it even still. So I don't know if this w was originally edited or not by somebody, but I had a lot of fun with this um, with this picture. So uh, oh, I see my, my one screen is uh, froze on my... Let me just see here. So, yeah. So, um, there we go. So, I'm going to edit this uh, little fella up. Oh. I got to get rid of that. There we go. There's a bit of a lag there. Okay, so I'm going to work on this. I'm going to kind of bring this to life, and I'm going to use, today we're going to make, we're going to use the blur thing, because someone asked me how to use the blur feature the other day. So this one I'm going to use a blur on. We're going to bring this picture to life. 
So basically, let me see now. We're going to go to the... All right. I'm going to bring up... Um, I think I'm going to I'm gonna start off and I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to go and we're going to do some cropping because like I said before, cropping is really the key to this picture. Now, if you look at this picture, you're going to see that there is on the right-hand side, there's a lamp post that's been obviously covered like the one in the center. And it's only a little bit. And it's kind of bugging me because... It, it draws your eye to that edge. I'd like to see that edge all white. Now, I can do one of two things here. I can actually bring that in and get rid of it. So if I did that. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to bring the ground up a little bit. Get rid of the ground a little bit. We'll go right up to the curb. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so now when I look at the picture, I look at where the piano and eatery is, and I don't get my eye distracted with the with the uh, sides. So let's hold that on. You can see what we did there. We changed it. We just got rid of that lamp post on the right hand side because it to me it's just a tr just distracting me and pulling my eyes over there. I don't want to see that. I want to look at the picture. So really the piano eatery bar, the, the door of this um, establishment is kind of where you want to look. So um, that's where I, that's where my eyes want to go is right to that um, door. So we're going to go into our, um, we're going to go into our basic settings and we're just going to play around here. Now this is, this photo is very balanced with light. And obviously it's, there's, you can't see the clouds, it's snowing, it's overcast, uh, but there's a lot of color in those bricks and right now we're not really seeing them. So I'm just going to go through and pull out some of the contrast here and it's already, um, coming to life. We're just brightening it up a little bit, adding some color. Let's see what the ambience does. We'll pull it down. So you can see what the ambience does. When I bring the ambience all the way up into the plus range, you can see it kind of make it kind of brings out the tree in the background, brings out colors, but if I go back the other way, it makes it look more wintry. It makes the snowflakes pop a little bit more. So here's a decision to make. Do we do it like this or we do it like that? Now, here's a trick for you. If we bring this all the way up, I'm noticing my screen's getting a little um, blue, but I'm noticing a lot of stuff is popping out here that I like. So I have to decide, do I want to go back to that or do I want to come up to that? Now, it's a hard call. But I think we can bring the red bricks out if we went back like this. So if we go back, now it looks, it's a tough call. Do we leave it in the middle? But I kind of like that. It looks a little bit more stormy and snowy like this than it does if we go all the way up there. So we're going to pull it back. So we're going to pull the ambience back in this case. And we're going to go with that. I'm going to click that on and we're going to look where we've come to here. So you can see that it's got, this, the picture's gone from this to that at this point. All right. So let's go back into there. Now I'm going to scroll down and highlights. Well, we can pull the highlights, but the highlights kind of, it's kind of bright right now and I don't mind the brightness because it's a snowy day. So we're going to keep, we're going to keep it snowy. I want this picture bright and poppy. So I'm going to go and, um, I'm just going to go back here. The shadows. Do we want to play with the shadows? No. I think everything we're going to do from here on in. Warmth. Do I want to add warmth? Um, well, there's co the warmth is nice, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like that. Now, with this picture, is going to be really kind of doing some details. We're going to probably use the brush on the buildings to pop the brick out. We don't really want to... If we want to brighten anything at this point, we kind of have to brighten the individual sections of the picture because if we keep brightening the whole picture, the white's just going to get whiter and blown out. So I'm going to keep it like this. So we've come from this to that right now. Now, I could go into the HDR, which hide dynamic range, 
And let's have a look at what's happening here. Do we like that? Again, this is kind of taken away from what we wanted. But I always kind of go in here and play with this. That's kind of cool. It's kind of making it, again, like I said, that's kind of what we wanted was something a little bit kind of magical. It's almost brightening up everything in the middle. But no, I'm going to pass on that for this, this edit. So we're going to go back to here, though. That was nice. I'm going to go back out here, and I'm going to go to Curves. I'm going to see if I can brighten it in Curves. So we're going to go up to Curves. And going to go down to Soft Neutral. So we're going to go to Neutral here. And we're going to go to the Color Palette. Let me go to the Color Palette. And I'm going to select on Blue. And I'm going to pull that line. Now, if we pull this line back, you can see what happens. I don't know if I need to do anything in here. Again, this the whole purpose of this tutorial is to, s to experiment. Because I, I, I could guess and do it quickly, but I want to experiment a little bit. So I'm pulling that back down. And I'm probably going to leave it there. I, I Again, I tried, and I wanted to see what would happen. So... I'm going to go out of there, and I'm going to go into the brush. And I'm going to go to Exposure, and I'm going to go down to 3. And I'm going to brush on... Actually, I'm going to turn it up to 7. I'm going to just brush that building, and I'm going to put a little bit of a brush on the piano eatery section. So I've just lightened that up a little bit. So you can see if I hold my finger, on, if I go out of here, you can see what I've done. I brightened it a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to go back into the brush, and I'm going to grab the saturation. I'm going to bring it down to 5, and I'm going to lighten. I'm going to put a bit of color on all those buildings. You could zoom in for this. Don't forget, you can zoom in. I'm kind of doing it quick, but I want to put the brush on. So I'm brushing my finger right now over the brick. And I'm highlighting all that. So you can see what we've done now. Now the building's popping out. Now we're going to go into details and structure. Details and structure gives me two things again to do. I'm going to go in here and I can... Structure is, as we spoke of the other day, it's basically the texture. So it can bring out the texture in the building, like the brick lines. All Anything that's got a line on it, it emphasizes the line. Same with sharpening. Sharpening will also do the same thing. Sharpening will find shapes and objects and colors and go around the outside and, and, and highlight the edge. and makes it look sharper. If you want to tone something down, you would smooth those out. Just like when you would smooth out, let's say, for example, you want to edit your face, but you don't want the wrinkles or the blemishes to show. Basically, a filter is basically just smoothing everything out. Taking away the contrast is one thing. Pulling back the clarity. Doing many, many different things like that. So we're going to go into the structure, and we're going to pop the structure up a bit. And I'm going to sharpen this a little bit, because, again, this is we're looking at Christmas card kind of photograph here. So this is something you would take. So we're gonna go back to the original. Oh, let me I gotta do that. So you can see there's the there's the photograph there. But let's say for example you've taken this picture and you thought, oh, that would be really nice for a photo or for a Christmas card at Christmas. These little steps are gonna make it look even nicer. So there's your original and there's your Christmas card. So how can we make this look more Christmassy? Well, what we can do is we're gonna go into the blur, the lens blur. The lens blur is down. Um, there. Now, look what happens. So we're going to find a focal point here. I'm going to kind of, we're going to, we're going to basically pull this. So basically this little thing you see, this circle, if I put my two fingers on either side of the inside of that circle, I can stretch it out and move it around. As you can see there, you can turn it, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So basically I'm moving that around. So it's nice that I'm getting this building here. I want to get that building blurred out a little bit. So I'm going to pull that back like that. So if I was standing here and looking at the piano bar, that building is closer to me, which means makes sense that it's blurred out. So I'm going to blur it out even more. 
and I'm going to just pull that up a little bit so I can get I can get that whole building in if I want like that. But it's kind of neat if I pull maybe I'll pull it down a bit so the top of the building is blurred out a little bit. Again, we're making this a little bit whimsical. This is like for your Christmas card. So I'm going to go OK there. Actually, no, I don't want to go OK there. I want to pull that back. Sorry, my mistake. So I want to go back to that edit. So I'm going to go back up to my little uh, arrow with squares. I'm going to click that on and I'm going to go view edits. And then I'm going to go lens blur and I'm going to edit lens blur because I wasn't done. So now that I've selected the area that I want to work with, so my center is basically going to stay like it is. I'm going to be working with the outside rings. Now I have this option here. I have an option. If I click this on, I can adjust my blur strength, which is that. So when I do that, I can blur it more. Or I can transition. I can make it more or tighter. So do I want a tighter transition? So that means going from sharp, the inside circle, to where the blurring starts. Do I want it to be a longer transition or a shorter transition. A shorter transition is going to mean that it's going to be more of an abrupt change in blur. So I'm going to just pull it out a bit because we don't want it too overdone. Again, it's so easy. Remember, it's so easy to overdo it when you're first doing this. Big, big uh, learning curve is when is enough enough. Um, so now we're going to go back into here, the vignette. Now the vignette is, do we want it darkened a bit? And this is tricky on this picture because if it was a person, you might want to. But again, when we do that, where vignette is when you basically put a dark edge around something and then you, c you frame it with, a, like, you know, um, if you d were doing a portrait, you might want to darken out the background. Now, you can make it lighter, your vignette or you can darken it. And I think in this case, I don't know if we want a vignette because the problem is that we don't want that gray ring around this picture with the white sky. So I'm gonna leave it at that and have a look at where we're at. So I'm gonna go now touch the picture and see what our original was like. So you can see a lot has happened to this picture. Definitely the snow's popping out more. Um, it's richer. I'm gonna go gonna go back out. Yeah, so there's the original there, and then there's the new adjustments with the color tone. And I'm gonna go back into um, and I'm just gonna bump up the saturation. Now remember, if you've adjusted the saturation already, when you go and pull up your saturation again, like I just did, it's gonna be, everything in this bar is gonna be zero. Now we did go into this uh, setting before, but it's been saved as a separate edit further on down the line one of the first things we did. So basically what I'm doing is I've adjusted the saturation before and I'm adjusting the saturation over top of that previous saturation edit. So you have to remember that. You're not going in and say, oh, if you want to make, you can pull the saturation back now, but it's you've done it twice. You've adjusted the saturation earlier in the edit and you're doing it again here. But again, for some of these pictures, if you were doing this for, um, if you were, now, yeah, if you were doing this for something fancy, you might want to take more time. But now, there's one thing I'm noticing here, and I don't know if you're seeing it, but do if you look at top left, there's the building. You've got another one of those lines that always ag it agitates me. The question is, do I want to get rid of that or leave that line there? It almost looks like I've cut off part of the building. And the thing is, you, you don't want to have situations where you're chopping things off. So... I'm going to go up here and see if I can take that out. So I'm going to go to the healing brush. Now, the healing brush, I think, is pretty temperamental when you're trying to work on the edge of a photograph. But I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, okay. So that's not bad. 
Okay, so I'm just going to see what that looks like. Okay, so it's... Now, that actually looks a lot better than that. Now it looks... It, it's, made this, it's made the landscape look a little lower. It makes it look a little bit more countryfied. And, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now, there's one other thing that I see going on with this picture, and it might need to be balanced out a bit. If you look at the building closest to us, it's kind of leaning a little bit. And I don't know if I can change that in rotate or not. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select rotate, which is top left to down. Um, and it automatically rotated the picture. Did you see that? It's moved at 0.9%. Four degrees, <laughs> nine point almost one degree, and that was my complaint. See, I don't know if I can hold it down. Oh, hold on, I gotta go back to nine because nine is where I'm gonna just get out of here. I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna select rotate, and it right away changes it. It straightens the angle, and that picture definitely needed that. I saw it. You could see now, according to my grid, that everything has has lined up a little bit so I'm gonna save that so yeah that's that's better right there you can see how that pictures come down because again if you're taking a picture especially if it's cold out and you're, you're taking a photograph you might not have the best opportunity to to line up your shot in frame so you can do it after and it's such a small tweak so you can see what we've done we've definitely made this this uh, picture come alive so um, I still want it punchier. Um, so I'm going to go into my curves. I'm going to go down to neutral. And now this is something, this is kind of a more an advanced move, but this curve level, one thing I like to do sometimes is pull that across on the bottom and it adds a lot more, it pulls the darks out. This is something you could practice with, but again, it's pretty uh, advanced. I'm going to go okay there. All right. Now, we said this is like a Christmas card, so we're going to go and finish off with a frame. Now, in the frame section, there's lots of choices. Do I want a harsh black frame? No. Now, when you select a frame, if you basically hold your finger down on the screen and move it, from left to right, you change the size of your screen. Now, you can do some pretty cool things with double layering these too. So let's say, for example, you wanted a mat. So what we could do is we could do that, and then I could say, okay, and then I want to add another, oh, then I want to add another frame, and I'm going to select a white frame, a white plain frame. And I can do that if I want. So I've added two frames here. So I've kind of cheated. I've kind of cheated on it by doing two. So I could do that as my frame too. And again, one of my options here, there's there's other frames out there. You can pick a rounded one. You so you could do this whole thing with a rounded frame if you wanted to. So let's go, we're going to go back, we're going to undo that frame. So again, now, without the frame on it, it looks like it's missing something now. So because this is like a, a little card or something you would hang on the wall for sure, we definitely want to go with a frame. So now we got to pick a frame. Just a little black frame? I don't know. Do we want something like that? Like a Polaroid? Maybe not for this picture. It's not... If it was, if we made it look kind of old, maybe we'd want to go with that. Again, we're getting into design. It's kind of different than editing, but it's all kind of tied in when you're doing this yourself. So let's go and see what we've got here. There's some kind of neat stuff there. That's kind of neat too. But I think we're going to go with just something plain. And the question I have is, do we go with something, do we want to go white? and then a little black frame around the outside. So let's do that. And let's add another frame. 
let's set a black frame and we'll pull the black frame so let's say that's your card right there so you know what like I said you can you can play with frames all day and I suggest you try it out because it's kind of neat especially if you're using a business page if you're um, putting a picture up there it just brings more attention to it it looks like it's out of a magazine because a lot of frames are used on magazine photos just to separate it from the print background so definitely uh, if you're trying to make a little bit of an impact on your business page with your photograph take the time to frame it it looks like you it was in a magazine mm, tea today so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this if we go back to the original there's your original picture it looks great someone took that oh look at that beautiful but if you show wow that's really nice so there's the difference. That's what I'm trying to show you guys uh, what you can do. So we're just going to we're going to save that. Uh, we'll save a copy. And that's done. So there you go. Very simple edit um, before and after. It was a lovely picture to start with, but you can see the little things we did have made that thing come to life. So let's see what else we got here in the, uh, let's open up, let's go to camera, no, we don't want to go to camera, we'll get out of there, we'll go to open, there we go, now we're going to scroll down to our, now, I thought we would do something fun, um, let's do something, we haven't done a beach picture yet, okay, here's a great example. Lisa was away in Cuba, and this is her photograph she they took with a cell phone. I think Tina took this of her with a cell phone. Now, I can guarantee you that if you were standing there on the beach, that picture didn't look like that. It would have looked much more lively. But because phones do not take pictures the way you see them. And uh, you've got that blue water there. Um, you've got that lovely sky. And Lisa's kind of lost in the, the sun because the sun's coming across. So we're going to play with this. We're going to go in and we're going to start off. First of all, do we want to crop it? Well, she's not in the middle. But if we crop it more, we're going to lose some of that ocean. But there's a lot of beach on the bottom. So let's, let's, uh, you know what? We can crop this one after this time because, uh, we're going to see what we can save and there's a lot of color we want to work with. So we're going to go in. We're going to, the first thing we could do, sorry, I'm going to go back. The first thing we could do on this picture is check the HDR. And you could see already just automatically what's happened to this picture. It's already looking awesome. It's come to life. We, we want to brighten it. So we're going to see. Okay, now this is a good one for brushing because we might want to play with this. So you can see before, after, it's come to life. I'm going to zoom in and uh, Lisa's actually jumping in the air here. But you can't really tell because it's so far away. And do we want to come in that close and do it? I don't know. So we're going to go and look at our tune image department. We're going to go look at the brightness. Um, now you can see down the bottom right, you can see how all the bright colors are in, in the, it's in the middle. So everything is nicely lit in this picture. So I'm going to go basically to the contrast now. I don't want to play with that too much. So a lot of this picture is good, except for we're missing the colors. Now the ambience will do some stuff here. Do we want it soft or do we want it punchy? See how the ocean comes out? But we're going to kind of leave that one alone too. So this is, I know where I want to go with this. I just got to get there. The highlights, pulling out the highlights is pretty cool here. Uh, going to the shadows. Can't really do much with the shadows because there's not a lot that shadowed. Like Lisa's back is shadowed, but we can't really, with just moving this dial is, is trying to adjust the whole picture. It's not working. 
The warmth, do we want to add warmth? No. So there's really not a lot we can do at this point with those controls, but we are going to do something. We are going to go to the brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the brush and we're going to go to saturation. I'm going to go to five and I'm going to start brushing the sky. And I'm also going to brush the water. And I'm going to put my finger on it to show you the difference. Oh, we're going to get out of there and I'm going to show you what we did. So already, there's our picture. Now it's starting to look like a beautiful shot. Because all we're doing is we're not, we didn't, we didn't add to this picture. We pulled stuff out from the picture. So it's not like I, I grabbed a paintbrush of blue and brushed the blue over. No, I just took the colors that were there and brightened them up. Because you know as well as I do that now we're getting closer to something you'd be looking at at the beach. So, and then as we get closer, you can start to see if you want to crop this picture a little bit. And we, we will need to, I think, because Lisa's not 100% in the center and it's throwing my eyes off. So we're going to go back into here and we're going to go to structure. I'm, I'm just going to pull a little structure here and we're going to sharpen this image a little, little bit. Do we want it? Just a little bit. And again, the reason I want to show you this is how I bounce around in an edit. How I bounce back and forth with a picture. So now we're going to go to um, more brush and we're going to make stuff pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to go to saturation. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush that sky a little bit more and the water. Now, we want to make Lisa pop out a little bit. So we're going to go to the selection tool. We're going to select Lisa right in the middle. But we're going we're gonna to use our two fingers to pull down the area. And we're going to see if we can brighten her up a little bit without making a mess of everything around. And the reason I want to show you this is... If we brighten it too much, we're going to make it look like there's a bright spot in the middle of the picture. Like that. That's what happens if you brighten it too much. So, it's tricky. You don't want to come in and say, oh yeah, Lisa's not bright enough, so we're going we're gonna to brighten her up. And then do that. So... Yeah, so let's have a look. So maybe what we're going to do is zoom in. So maybe we're going to, we might have to leave Lisa like that. Um, we're going to go to the brush tool. And um, and we're going to see if we can add a little bit of light. See, if you brush it on, you can kind of just get Lisa there okay so we're gonna kind of go with that I think for the for the brushing now we're gonna go to the crop and uh, we're gonna put Lisa right in the middle of the picture There we go. Now, I think I made an error earlier, and I'm going to go back to an edit, and I'm going to look at the selective, and I'm going to delete that. And you can see when I deleted that out, the bright light behind Lisa is gone now. So we're going to keep Lisa shaded in this picture. So we're going to go back, and now we might add some more pop to this picture. So there's a bit of hard contrast or soft contrast. These are presets that are really cool, but again, not a big fan, but we're going to go with the soft contrast edit there. And for some reason, I never saved my crop. Hmm. 
And there we go. Now we are crop leases in the middle of the picture. Now, do we need to... We're going to do a vignette of this. Now this is an opportunity to darken the outside a little bit and brighten the inside. And I'll tell you, one thing that can happen when you're editing, sometimes you just have to stop and go back to the beginning if you start to go down a path you don't really want to go down because everything you've done to the picture, if you keep trying to fix over top of your edits, all you're doing is distorting the picture even more. You've got to remember, when you start messing with stuff, you do affect the original picture. So you're better off to start again and go all the way back than it is to try to fix if you're at that point. So notice how I had that bit of bright light where Lisa was. Instead of trying to darken that light, I just went back and, and took that edit out. Don't get caught where you're saying, oh, I made that too light. Oh, I'm going to make it darker now. Oh, that's too dark. I'm going to make it lighter now. Go back to where you started from. So... We've got our inner brightness there, so we're adding a little bit of brightness, and we're going to go back to the outer. outer. And now if I put my finger on it, you can see the difference of this picture now. So if you go away on holiday and say, oh, this is where I went for my holiday. This is the picture of the beach. This is much better. This is the sky. You know when people say, oh, look at that beautiful sky, and they go to take a picture, and it's just not there? because you don't have the right lighting. So um, we could take a brush, and we could... I'm going to see if I can warm up the beach a little bit. So I'm going to take the brush, and I'm going to go to temperature, and I'm just going to see if you can do this to the beach. Now, this is overexerted, but see what you can do? You can add a bit of temperature to the beach. Obviously way too much, but I'm going to go back. But I do like the white sand here. Now, it is sunset here, probably, though the picture's not picking it up. But um, I think, um, again, th what, what kind of picture do you want? You could put a yellow haze over this whole picture if you wanted it to have that feel. So I'm going to go back just up to um, saturation and just... Don't want to overdo the blue in the background. Yep, I think we're done. I like how the sand got white. Um, it looks like the white sand now. So yeah, so we'll save that. So I'm going to export that. And um, we're going to save a copy. And I'll post these pictures for anyone watching. Uh, can see them after. But again, um, look at the sky. It's popping out now. It's not getting washed with the picture. It's not getting flattened out in the image. So I got I got time for one more edit here. Um, open from device. We're going to go down. We'll do one more for you. Concert photography with a phone. Okay, I'm going to do this guy right here. Here is a picture I took with my phone. I didn't take my camera, and this is 5440. Taken at the Horseshoe Tavern. Now, how can we make this look cool? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the rotate section and see if it twists it. It doesn't twist it. It can't pick up on it. Maybe it is okay. I just thought that the light rack on the top was a little off. So I'm going to go okay. So, Crazy things you can do with concert photography, especially this one. It's not going to be, if we zoom in, it's actually pretty good. It's actually not bad, you know, iPhone in that. Because the, the stage is very well lit here at, at the Horseshoe Tavern. So, But everything else is dark, and that's kind of cool. Maybe that's the look we want. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to, first off, let's see what we can do with HDR. So see the difference right off the bat, how we've pulled out all the people now in the concert. And um, now, while we're on HDR, you have options. You can go at nature. If you were, these are, the again, this is a preset, like a filter. But this is if you're taking photographs of nature, if you're doing a picture of people, if you want a soft, or if you want a strong. 
So you can see when you go strong, you almost get animated, and um, which can be kind of cool too. Now, once you've edited it, um, you can get into the saturation and the colors and stuff and the filter strength and all that. So you can see right now, if you're at a concert, hey, I took this picture. That's kind of cool. It's, it's got depth to it, three-dimensional. You could almost save that and put it up. But there is some other colors going on. But what you can do with this is really cool. Is if we find the saturation. You can almost you can make it black and white. So we could do a cool black and white. Maybe maybe we'll try a cool black and white. So I'm going to pull the colors out of it now. And then I'm going to go to black and white. And see if we can... Uh, Do something with the black and white. So again, if that's not bad. So again, even with an iPhone picture, you've got a lot of detail to work with because this picture was dark. Um, again, we can select the colors of the room. There was a lot of red back there, so we can play with the reds. Or I guess they were maybe orange. There was orange back there. So you can you can again you you got to dive in and play with all these settings. I mean the grain in a picture, you get a lot of grain with black and whites that you can play with if we zoom in. I don't know. Do I like it? Maybe not 100%. So I'm just going to get out of there. I kind of go back to the I'm going to go back to the 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 HD view my edit and I'm going to go back to the HDR and I'm going to open up the editing and I'm back to where I was. So now what I've done is I've gone in and I'm going to go to my saturation. I'm going to bring my saturation back. The only problem with this picture is there was, especially with concert photography, you got to remember you're dealing with all the lights on the stage and they're changing all the time. So when you're photographing instantly, you're your light is changing, so your meter's off. It's it's really tough. It's really tough to get great concert. You've got to do a lot of it. And here you can see, obviously, they had some red lights on. Everybody is red, so you've got the red on. So how can you get rid of the red? One thing you can do is just go and pull the red back. So I'm going to keep this picture like this. I'm going to get out of here. Now I'm going to go to the curves layer. Now the curves layer is going to allow me, if I go down to the reds, I can actually pull some red out. So you can see what happens here. Now I'm, I'm pulling out the red and I'm giving it a completely different look. I'm going to go to the greens and I'm going to pull the greens back. Do I want to pull the greens back? Now I've made it kind of bluish. So I pulled the colors back out of the picture. I'm going to go to the blue, and I'm going to pull them back. Okay, so here's the original. It was off. I thought it was off, but it can't tell at all. There's not enough straight lines, I guess, for the program to figure that out. So you can see what I've done now, and I kind of like that. Now, how can we make this photograph more dynamic or dramatic? We go into crop, and I'm going to set it for 9 there, 16 by 9, and I'm going to come down like that. And that's kind of cool now. Now we got now we got something going on. So go p let's pull that in and go to the original. There's the original. Now, if you're at a concert and uh, you're having a great time, obviously the lights are amazing. You can see all these people in front of you perfectly fine. The thing is, your camera's not. Your camera does not work like your eyes do. Your eyes can adjust to every area that's lit. It sees the person in front of you, and it'll adjust. When you look up at the stage, it adjusts. But the thing is, this camera is looking at everything and only can take one image based on what it sees, and it adjusts to one light. And it's going to adjust when something is a phone is taking a picture, it's going to look at a main light that it's focused on and it's going to adjust everything else to that one light. So um, 
So we can go into shadows. Maybe we can pull some more shadows out of these uh, people. Because I haven't even played in here. I just wanted to... If you pull too much out, it gets like that. I kind of like that, where you see the heads and you see the band. They're kind of, it's kind of sharp. It's almost, you want it kind of contrasty. I do for concert photography. I look at these colors. Do I want it warm? Again, we're playing with it. If I add a bit of highlight, I can see the people a little bit more. So that's kind of not bad. Saturation. You could pull the saturation back a bit. Contrast up. Do I want to brighten it a bit? Just going to go OK. So definitely now looking at the uh, band. And I can see, OK, here's this, I'm going to do something here. It's very hard to see for you. I can see it. But that bulkhead at the top left of the picture, so the top left um, or the top left part of the screen, there's a bulkhead up there. Now, if we go into perspective, we haven't touched on perspective yet, but perspective is going to allow me to twist this picture a certain way. Sometimes when you take pictures of buildings, and I'll, I'll actually get a better one, but I can pull this up like that. See what's happening to my picture? I'm distorting it a little bit. I'm trying to square it up. And I'm going to go OK there. Now, to me, my eyes look at that picture better. I don't know about you, because that bulkhead line at the top, top upper, top left, sorry, upper top right, the right of the um, screen is uh, has this bulkhead going across the top. And now I've pulled it up a little bit. This works great when you take a photograph of a building or you're trying to take a photograph of a picture on a wall, but you're not a, you can't get 100% in front of it. So when you take the picture, the corner's off a little bit. You can actually tweak it using the perspective to pull it in. And I'll find a picture where we can actually do that with uh, maybe next time. So we'll get into that. So let's go. We'll, we'll touch on perspective later, but I just wanted to bring it in. And it's at least we've opened it up and we've had a look at it. So I'm going to now just go into my brushes here and just see if I can touch anything else up on that. So I'm just going to go exposure. And I'm going to see if, uh, d if I want to do that to these folks. Make them pop out a little bit more. And I kind of like that. I kind of see the people in front of me now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. So you can see what we've done. We've made it look more. The people give it depth. You can see the guy with the cell phone. And if you wanted to, you could go in, you could zoom in on the guy with the cell phone and, and play with it. Now you can see, when I zoom in, it is a grainy picture. And it's amazing how this picture is as good as it is. Um, but that's, iPhones come a long way in dark spots. Um, now, there's a guy back there, the bass player. Can't remember his name, but he's actually the guy who came up with the name of 5440. Someone might know. Um, we're going to go brush. We're going to pop him on. And we're going to bright. And we're going to pull that down over him. Now, concert photography, you can get away with doing this because it looks like a light on him. So we've actually lit him up now. So concert photography, you can do a lot more tricky stuff. And you can get away with a lot more. Um, we could put a vignette around this picture. Um, just to pull it in a little bit. Though we did highlight it, but we, c we can also adjust this to how much of that vignette we want. But I kind of like the fact that we're putting it around there. So there we go. So there's our uh, concert picture. So this is something you go to a concert, and uh, especially if you're not driving, I would... Um, I would uh, actually edit this picture if I wasn't driving. I'd be editing these in the car on the way home <laughs> or on the bus. So, uh, yeah, I just uh, gained the attention to this order. So this is how you can just fix up concert pictures. And it would be really good uh, to do that because a lot of people go out to clubs and stuff like that. And you, know, you got your phone and you're shooting pictures. And a lot of times we just dump these pictures because they don't look great. But you can salvage it. And let, let's go back and look at this again one more time. So there it is. There's the shot. 
that's what we created. We made it almost look uh, a little arty, and if you want to, hold on, let's go back. If you want to have some fun, oh, I think we're saving it. I don't want to do that. Let's go back. Uh, we're going to go to frames, and we could get, um, we might be able to get funky with a frame. Like, even that's kind of cool. Even that band on the side is kind of cool. But I think we can do that better with this even. Or we can make it look like a film. I mean, these, again, these are just stuff that's sitting around in the uh, editing uh, toolbox. Even that's kind of cool. So if you want to frame around your picture, you want to make it look cool, you can, um, you can then you can go... Uh, what else can we do here? Oh, need a capital. I'm typing with one uh, finger here. Bear with me. Maybe if I spelt it right. Okay, so you can do you could put that down there if you wanted to. We can make it smaller, but we can uh, we can bring it down. And this is this again is uh, do what you want with the writing with the name. Again, you can sit here all day and pick the uh, way you want your... So there you go. So there you go. There's your concert picture. So there's your... Um, so we'll go, okay. So there's your... You went to the bar. You took that picture. And then uh, you come home, and all of a sudden, you look like a photographer. Just because of that, that photograph cleaned up like that. And it looks really cool. I like it. Look, The club looks packed, and uh, everyone's having fun. You can see people got even got iPads iPhones up there, or oh, I was just a big phone, big phone there. So yeah, so we're gonna save this guy. We'll save a copy that will leave the original. So you'll now have the original and this copy. And the way we've saved it is we can go back and pull up any of those edits we want. But that is a pretty cool picture for social media. If we salvage that, that to me just looks like, yeah, whatever. And that now looks like it's got some life. So for those that go out to the clubs. Taking pictures or you know what, e you know what's great with this is if you're in a band and I know uh, there's some guys in here that are in bands, people send you pictures they've taken. Then you go and edit these up. So 5440 probably won't post that picture, but on Instagram, they may flip that one around and use it. So. If you're a band and you're getting pictures coming in and someone sends you this picture, just imagine if you could in, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so put that up on your page. It looks so much better. And then you could put your band's name there. So if your band's name is Lightning Bolt, you just put Lightning Bolt down there. You, you can go in there and do that edit. Um, so, yeah, definitely that's a much cooler picture than that. And it took a little bit of effort and it looks great. So anyways, we saved it. It is almost, oh, it's, I'm looking out my window, and it is like a blizzard. So anyways, I'm going to go and walk the dogs. Coming up tomorrow, I will be doing our another, because we do this every day now, lockdown. We're doing a health, how we're looking after our health while we're locked in. Are we binge eating? Do we need to cut back? We'll talk about that. And then Saturday at 7, we're having a, we're having a tortilla tapas party we're gonna make tortillas live we're gonna show you a really cool recipe low carb delicious um uh tortilla recipe we're gonna do that sunday lisa and i are gonna be beside back on the beach again uh having a fun chat like we did yesterday and next week we'll be back to probably doing <laughs> this all over again uh Tuesday, next Tuesday night, I start my Comedy Chords and Chaos show. 
I'm putting that together now. It's a one-hour fun show where it's uh, a lot of adult fun, a lot of laughing, joking, talking about crazy stuff. So we got the Rocking Crawlick as our musical guest, which will be a lot of fun. Um, he is an acoustic. He's uh, an acoustic songwriter, um, singer songwriter. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, you might want to check that out. Probably have some guests on the show as well. So, anyways, I'm gonna fly. Gonna let you guys go. Thank you again for watching. There's other tutorials. If you go to the YouTube channel, you can see all the ones you've missed. And uh, maybe next time we'll do more concert photography because uh, pulling these old pictures up was kind of cool. So, anyways, if you do have photos send them in to me i can use them or i'll edit them up when i'm sitting on the couch because you know i got nothing else to do anyways take care guys see ya bye now